All right, this is the same basic problem from the previous example. I'm just giving the actual plate some dimension. So all the units of length here are inches, and then we're in pounds for forces once again. So in this one, I'm going to assume essentially that the bolt, um, well, actually, I'm using the, the, uh, the failure load that we found for the bolt. So what I'm kind of doing here is calculating the stresses in the joint at the load at which the bolt would fail. So with those stresses, we can make comparisons and calculate factors of safety within the joint to ensure that it's not going to fail before the bolt does. Uh, there's three typical modes of failure in this kind of uh, double shear joint. You can have failure from tension in the plate itself, and say plate, but it could be any of the three plates. Bearing failure, which is a compressive failure, compressive yield between the bolt and the plate itself. Then tear out is literally pulling just a chunk of material out of the edge of the plate um, from the bearing force of the bolt itself. Now in each one of these, <clears throat> we've got uh, the middle plate here is dot six two five inches and it's loaded with the full force. The outer plates are dot three seven five inches and are loaded, of course, with half the force because it has to split between the two. So with that in mind, since dot six two five is not quite double dot three seven five. The center plate should have higher stresses. Uh, it's got a larger. It's got double the force with less than double the area. So uh, it should be the one leading to failure. That assumes that the plates are made out of the same material, which is an assumption that I'm going to stick with here. So I'm only going to carry out calculations on the actual center plate here, starting with plate tension. So what this is looking at is the actual tensile stress generated when you load that bolt hole. So I'm taking a cut through the plate and just showing one side of it here. So we'd actually have it kind of something like that most likely. Oops. So when I take that cut there has to be a the way that it's loaded the bearing from the bolt acts that way, which means you've got to have a tensile reaction coming out with both of these surfaces going that way. So the actual area of those two remaining pieces are what goes into the stress calculation. This is just a normal stress, uh, an F over A type of calculation, where we have F, we just need to calculate the area of those two sections. So that's what's going into here to calculate area. We got the width of the plate is two inches. The whole diameter is a half inch. So taking them away gives us essentially that full distance, the length of both ligaments. Then we want to multiply by the thickness to get an area, and that's dot nine three seven five inches squared. Now I calculate a stress again, just a tensile stress, so it's F over A. And out of that, we get 22,200 PSI. So that's just a stress. If we want to calculate a factor of safety or if we were doing sizing of the plate or anything like that, we would need the yield strength of the material. I'm not going to go through that setup here, but we'll just write in. You would compare, in this case, sigma to the yield strength to calculate a factor of safety, if uh, so desired. Now the next one, same geometry, we're working on the middle plate. And this one is actually taking into account the actual bearing of the bolt on the hole that it goes into. So we've got this force that's reacting that way into this bolt hole. It's literally pushing the bolt, the material of the bolt is pushing on the material of the plate itself. And that interaction, that contact, creates bearing stress. Uh, it's just, again, it's a tensile stress, F over A, where all we need to do is calculate the area. Now the area here is actually a projection. And I'm going to just real quickly redraw this thing so I can show what that projection is. So it's, it's the, if you just take a cut through the hole, that's the area that goes into a bearing calculation. 
So it's not the literal surface area of that semicircular section, it's the projection of it uh, perpendicular to the plane of the force or the line of the force. So all it is here is the hole diameter times the thickness. That's, that's a bearing area. So that area is just D times T. D is dot 5, T is dot 625, and we get dot 3125 inches squared. This is, is a, a normal stress once again. It's a F over A calculation, but in this case, the stress is compressive. So we're going to tag on the minus sign here. And out of this, we get negative 66. 590 psi and once again if we wanted to calculate a factor of safety for that it's a normal stress so we're calculating or comparing directly to the yield strength and before I move on with the bearing failure you can see this is the fairly high stress compared to the compared to the plate tension in this case in fact that's exceeding the yield strength of some of the weaker uh, steel alloys and certainly exceeds some aluminum alloys and things like that but this bearing failure it, it while it can lead to yield early on it doesn't often lead to absolute failure of the part now what you would actually get in a case like this with a whole is you get local deformation just in front of the hole. The hole would kind of become elongated, more oval, oval shaped uh, as bearing starts to occur and it compresses that material. But it can deform the hole quite a bit before there's any actual failure. Tear out is sort of the failure that results from too much bearing stress, um, which we'll cover that right now. So in tear out, what happens basically is the entire chunk of metal in front of the hole this little block rips out of the plate just tears directly out of the plate and that failure if that's going to happen means that this plane has to shear clean off and this plane has to clean shear off so those are the areas that we need to calculate a tear out failure So that basic rectangle would have this length, which was given as dot seven five in the problem statement. The thickness, once again, dot six two five, and there are two of those surfaces, one on each side. So we'll have a two out front. That area comes out to be dot nine three seven five inches squared. And this is a shear failure. We're, we're pulling, we're causing, again, that green chunk to slide out of the plate. And talk about the sliding failure, we're talking about shear. So we're going to calculate tau now as F over A. Twenty-two thousand PSI. That's the same as we got for the, the plate tension. But here, if we want to use that to calculate a factor of safety, we're going to compare to the yield strength in shear, which will be a lower value. So even though the, the stress is the same, it's, since it's a shear stress, this would fail before tensile failure occurs, according to the math here. Now, edge tear out is, is one that essentially you just want to avoid, or, or can be avoided um, pretty readily. Uh, you can kind of go through the math and do some algebra and come up with comparisons of this distance, which let's call length L here, to hole diameter D. And a common one in aerospace is that if you keep the edge distance L greater than or equal to 1.75 times the hole diameter, you tend to not have issues with edge tear out. So in our case, 1.75 times the half inch is just 0.875. So we're not quite to that value there, but close to it. And, and that's just a general value. It's kind of produced from, from computational models, but also testing and experience and things like that. And different industries will specify different values. Uh, even different use cases within the same industry might specify different values. 
but in this case, this is just a very general kind of value that I pulled out of an old reference.